If you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask you to turn to the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 30. Uh, remember our missionaries when you pray, all of them, and uh, particularly uh, for the work at Paris that has come directly out of us that the Lord would bless Brother Kenny and give him guidance. Exodus chapter 30, and we're going to begin reading in verse 22. Exodus chapter 30, beginning in verse 22, the Bible says, Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh, five hundred shekels, and of sweet cinnamon, half so much, even two hundred and fifty shekels, and of sweet calamus, two hundred and fifty shekels. Of cassia, five hundred shekels, after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of, and of oil, olive, and a, a hen. And thou shalt make it a oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be a holy anointing oil. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table, and all his vessels, and the candlestick, and his vessels, and the altar of incense, and the altar of the burnt offerings, and all his vessels, and the laver, and his, and his foot. And thou shalt sanctify them, that they may be most holy, whatsoever toucheth them shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint Aaron, and his sons, and consecrate them, and they that they may be minister unto the priest's office. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing oil unto me throughout all your generations. Upon man man's flesh shall it not be poured, neither shall ye make any other like it after the composition of it. It is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. Whosoever compoundeth any like it, or whosoever putteth any of it upon a stranger, shall even be cut off from his place. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take unto thee sweet spices, sack, and oincha, and, and galpanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense, of each shall there be a like weight. And thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection, after the art of the apothecary, tempered with tempered together, pure and holy. And thou shalt beat some of it very small, and put it before the testimony in the tabernacle of the congregation, and I will meet with thee, and it shall be unto you most holy. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for another opportunity to meet with your people here at Dover. God, be with us together as a people. Cause the holy anointing to come down and be with us this morning. Spread your Holy Spirit throughout us. Give our hearts encouragement in the days which we live. God, uh, be exalted in all things that we do and all things that we say, Lord. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it is in Christ's name that I do pray. Amen. Now, maybe some not so familiar scripture, and much of what we see in, in, in Exodus and Leviticus, we kind of run over very quickly because it was really tied to the worship of the Old Testament, and it was tied to the structure of the tabernacle of the congregation. And we know uh, through the Word of God that was indeed placed by replaced by the Lord Jesus Christ, but yet and still we find a, a great formula for real worship. Now, in the modern day, I would dare say that the majority of the time our worship is hindered by lack of preparation and by lack of holiness. You know, holiness is not a denomination, it's a characteristic. And either you, and with like the most characteristics, uh, you can improve on it. 
Now, uh, as far as the Holy Spirit, as far as salvation, he is the, the, that is the giver of God. He places that. But as you progress in your walk with the Lord and understand the Scriptures as they should, you can be more and more available to His service. Uh, holiness is really a uh, clean life that is in readiness to serve the Lord. Uh, it is not, uh, it is not a, 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 a place above everybody else, but rather it's a willingness to be used. And more than that, a, a, a person that is fit or ready to be used. And so we see that as Moses is giving a portion of the law, he makes some very specific uh, requirements to be prepared. Now, we're going to get into these in a moment, but I, I would ask you this. What did you prepare? What did you do spiritually to prepare for today? Were you, we know we were all a little wary about the weather this morning. Did you let that hinder your preparation? Were you more focused on the meal than you were on the meeting with God? And very frequently, I dare say, even, even myself, we get so caught up in a routine of things that the preparatory work is left aside. Now, going back to verse 22, and again, uh, the, right, the Lord Jesus Christ using, uh, I mean, excuse me, the Lord God of heaven using Moses to write, verse 23, take thou unto thee principal spices. Now, there are some principal things that go into worship. So, so, so must that must be there. Now, the first principal thing is that the God, the Lord Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and Lord the Holy Ghost, that He meets with us and He abides with us, that's a principal character. Now, we uh, live in such a day today that that which what, what is principal has been left aside. It's no longer there. It's more about lights and whistles and, and feeling good, and the worship has kind of left us. And, and sometimes we may wonder why we go away feeling empty and, and, and no nearness unto the Lord God, and it may be because this has not been done. The principal things have been left open. Take thou also unto thee principal spices. Now, at this point, at this point, the anointing of Aaron and his sons had not occurred. And, and so he was making Moses specifically responsible for this to happen. And in fact, as he is creating these ointments and oils that would be used to go throughout the house, and on Aaron and his sons, he made, he, he made Moses responsible for the preparation thereof. You know, you know who's responsible this morning? It's me. If I haven't prepared, nothing's going to happen. You know, you can make eloquent, eloquent words. You can say grandiose things, and if the Lord's not in it, you might as well not say anything. And, and so we find that the, the liability fell completely on Moses. And we, as God, as men of God, Jared, if you ever called the pastor again, listen, the responsibility is on you. Uh, you have to be prepared to do this. And so Moses was given specifically uh, the job of preparing these things and putting them together. Take thou also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh, and just as on an aside note, that was one of the uh, spices brought at the time of the Lord Jesus Christ when the, when the men from the east came. Take thou also unto thee principal spices of pure myrrh, 500 shekels. Now, I've seen different descriptions of six shekels of, as far as that is in our weight system, but some people say it's as big as a peck, which is, an eighth of, uh, which is uh, about an eighth of a bushel. So this was no small amount of ointment. And then I've also heard in a weight sense, it's like uh, two to three pounds. Uh, it was a lot of work. Now, I am no cook whatsoever, but uh, Donna loves to make bread, and I know when she's working it, 
It, it, it takes effort. And sometimes her elbows hurt. Sometimes her hands hurt. And it takes effort. But can you imagine to take something like a candle and, and get it down to a point that it's pliable? That's the kind of work it takes in. And if we want to meet with the Lord, that's the kind of effort it's going to take. It's going to take something of personal responsibility and to work it up and make it pliable and useful for the things of the Lord. And, and so that was the, the that is the first thing that he does is the amount of effort that has to be put into it. Of sweet cinnamon, and I don't know if their cinnamon was a powder like us, or if they had sticks of cinnamon, I've seen those too. But whichever type of cinnamon it was, could you imagine working a powder scent cinnamon into something that's very much like a candle or an oil and getting it all mixed up correctly? Great deal of effort, great deal of working of the hands to cause this to be ready. And of calamus, which I have no idea for sure what that one is, 250 shekels. So he has this huge, maybe as much as 10 or 15 pounds uh, of stuff that he is working together just in the preparation. It's not putting the temple together. It's not putting the sockets and the curtains into place. It is just preparing so he'll have something to rub about. Now, um, the purpose was to set people apart. When he came and he anointed the sons of Aaron, that was just to set them apart. To say, not only are you, di are you different, you're responsible to be different. And that's what it is in the modern day. You know, you know why churches are so weak and feeble in the modern age? We don't take that anointing seriously. We don't take it on as a responsibility. We don't, we don't take on the work of being a useful vessel, so that's almost that, that almost means nothing to the modern day Christian a, a, as living a life that would be useful unto the Lord, that He in His mercy and grace might use to His betterment. And so, just the preparatory work before you even apply the oil is a great, great deal of work. Verse twenty-four, and if Cassia, five hundred shekels. There goes another, could be as much as two pounds. And of the and the shickle of the sanctuary, and after the shickle of the sanctuary, and of olive oil, a hen, which I think is about a, a, a gallon in, in, in English measurements, all of it now working together, a huge thing that, that Moses became responsible for, and he did not chide the responsibility. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like the feel of oil on my on my hands. I don't like that greasy feeling. And I'm very quickly to get it, try to get it washed off if I'm doing something with oil. And we see that Moses is working and working, and, and every time maybe he thinks he's got it mixed, it's time to dump in another ingredient. Uh, you know, when you think you've got everything by the tail, dump in another ingredient. Add you some more prayer. Add, add you some more thought about the loss. Add, add, add you th think of something that you could do down here at the house of God. If it's nothing more than washing windows, do something else. So ingredient after ingredient after ing agre ingredient, and uh, Moses is all working it at, together. Verse 26, and thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith and the ark of the testimony. Now, uh, they were to go around and, and you would think how crazy this would look today. And once, once he got all that mixed up, to go around and begin just to simply rub that oil that he worked so hard on, on the walls around the sanctuary. Now, what that was a type of, what that was a looking toward is that the Lord might fill the house. Uh, oil always a type of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and a hopeful, a hopeful statement that maybe God will show up. Uh, you know what? This, this is, I guess if there's a good thing about the Lord not showing up, it makes us blessed when He does. And so it was just a hopeful thing. All that preparation, 
All that hard work in kneading and in, in mixing. And it, it was just a little preparatory thing. And then coming down to the table and, and anointing it and make sure it's uh, in, good sh in good shape. Uh, you know, you can often think about it like this. You know, I don't know much about good wood and bad wood. I know these pews are oak and it has to be taken care of. But I do know this, they use a thing called linseed oil in, in taking care of expensive furniture. And you know what it does? It sucks it up. You put it on there and the wood sucks it up and then you have to do it again. Maybe a week, maybe two weeks and the wood is sucked up the one that you put on there and it has to be put on there again. See, reading the scripture one time, it's going to run out on you. Now, this truck that I have now, I bought from Brother Kenny and um, I got used to electronic age and there's very electro few electronics on that truck. And I almost ran it out of gas because the little gas thing didn't go ding. And it's pretty bad when you get so stupid that you have to wait for a ding to buy some gas. But I almost ran it out. I was coming up over the hill right there in town, just past the light. And thank God it was just a downhill whoosh to Don Cherry's and get my gas because it was fixing to run out on me. You're going to run out of gas. And it is a lot of work to prep and prep and prep. And then you run out of the stuff and have to make it all over again. And then you have to start from scratch. See, that, that is the work sometimes that we, are the, as the Lord's people, we're not willing to put out such amount of effort to get the job done. And that is, uh, that is what, a lot of times why he doesn't meet with us. Verse 27, and the table and all his vessels. Now, again, I'm not much on this, but uh, I'm really getting into cast iron. I, 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 I like cast iron skillets and stuff like that. And, uh, and taking care of cast iron is a job. And I think that's one reason it kind of went out of vogue. Because it's not one of those dishes you can just set in the cupboard and it'll be okay. Uh, number one, it has to stay warm. You don't want cast iron to get too cold. It'll rust. And, and another thing about cast iron, you have to, just like that lady would oil on oak seats, it, it has to be oiled. You, you know, modern day um, cast iron, why it looks gray when you buy it, like if you buy a cracker barrel or something like that, is because it's not been in the heat and it's not been oiled. And if you want one real black, like the skillets we got down in the basement, they have to be exposed to heat. And once they're exposed to heat, you don't wash them off like you do, uh, uh, you know, Cornwell china. You simply wipe it down and put it back in the oven. You leave the oil on. And as time goes by, it will cook that oil down into the metal and it'll turn just as black as the ace of spades. And that's what he was doing. And every time it needed more oil, it talks about the candle snuffer and, and, the, and the seven, the, the seven stick cam, candle arbor. It had a little snuffer that you go and, and put the candles out. It had to be rubbed down. And, and why this snuffer have to be rubbed down? Oh, what happened to metal if it's just continually exposed to heat and you don't do nothing about it? It'll rust or it'll melt. And since this candle snuffer was gold, I'm assuming it would just melt. And so it had to be taken care of. Your spiritual health is, is it partially my responsibility, and part of it is, is, a, is a personal responsibility. And you have to do it. You have to put that effort out. And so all the instruments in the, in the wilderness tabernacle, they was to be done that way. Now, another thing that was a benefit what do we know about the wilderness tabernacle? It was always on the move. Now, me and Donna hadn't moved in 23, 4 years. I don't know, it's been a long time. I think Matthew was 5 when we moved out there. And uh, y'all know when you go into our house to the left, there's a little oak secretary. It used to be a lot better shape than it is now because on our last trip from the old brick house, and we moved in the pickup because we couldn't afford a uh, one of the moving trucks and 
I took off and it flipped out the back of the truck and smacked against the round and the mirror is a thousand wonders. The mirror didn't break, but it became loose like this and, and it didn't work well. Uh, and the reason why is it was on the move. You know, when you're on the move, when you're out there in that world, when you're doing things day by day, you're going to be exposed to the elements. And all this care of the internal vessels made it easier to move, protected them from the move. You know, we're out in the world so much, what we need is protection from the world. We need, we need to be rubbed down the wall. When, when, when you come here, it's my responsibility to give you the Word of God. And if God be praised, the Holy Spirit show up because just like the Linwood oil in this pulpit, we need to be uh, we need to be preserved from week to week to week. Verse twenty nine, and thou shalt sanctify them, set apart the vessels, make them to a specific purpose. Thou shalt sanctify them, and they shall be, be most holy. Whosoever touches them shall be holy. Can you imagine something so much possessed? with the person of God and, and the Spirit of God that when you touched it, you became holy in and of yourself. That's the way these vessels were to be. Have you ever have you met, ever met an individual along your uh, life's way that left a lasting impression on you and seemingly every time you talked with them, there was something they said about the goodness of God or the power of His Word and it stayed with you the rest of your life. That is the old. Now, it don't always happen, but that's my desire for you, is some little snivel, you get a little holiness on you, and it sticks with you. That, that was the purpose of, not to make Moses look like a big guy, but for the endurance of the people, for the endurance of the vessels, that they would, they would stay where they were. And so, Moses took on this responsibility very, very seriously. He didn't shirk from it. He went by the directions that God gave him. And thou shalt sanctify them, and they shall be most holy. Whosoever touches them shall be holy. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, or set them apart, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. So if they didn't have the all, they couldn't minister. You know what? We're fixing uh, to be uh, ordaining a man out of this church. And listen, if he don't have the all, we don't need to do it. If he doesn't have a proving uh, of who he is and what he believes, listen, we don't need to lay hands on him. This is, you know, it's a very serious thing. And I feel comfortable with Kenny. I'm not saying that, but I am saying this is a serious thing. Yeah. And he, uh, and the oil here was just as integral because it was used not only to anoint the, the, the concrete, the hard vessels, the tacks that held the temple together, it was to do the people as well. So in service of the Lord, you know, being anointed individually is much, much more important than what the building may or may not look like. Verse 31. And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, This shall be a holy anointing all unto me throughout your generations. They weren't to give it up. They weren't to lose the recipe. They wasn't to forget where it was at. Verse 32, Upon man's flesh shall it not be poured, neither shall you make any other like it after the composition of it. It is holy, and it shall be holy unto you. Verse 33. Whosoever count, compoundeth any like it, or so, whosoever putteth it on upon a stranger shall be even cut off from his people. Now, I want you to see that there was going to be individuals and the Lord God knew it and he told Moses, there's going to be people put out of faith ointment. There's going to be put out, people put out there that something similar, but it's not the real deal. Uh, you know what? There's a lot of things going out here under the name of the Holy Ghost, the anointing oil, that is not the real deal. And you know, some of it probably smells better and looks better 
than the plain old stuff that we're supposed to have. You know what? We as Baptist people, we should never, we should never deny the existence of the Holy Ghost. We should never deny the, the moving of the Holy Ghost, the convicting of the Holy Ghost. We should never do that. That's how the Lord God speaks to us today. But at the same time, listen, He doesn't do, uh, the Holy Ghost doesn't make you flop on the floor like an idiot, and it doesn't make you have a rock concert down at the Lord's house. That is a faith. It is not the oil that He promised. And we as the Lord's people, we don't need to pick up that faith stuff. We need to, you know, as difficult as it is, we need to keep with what we have and uh, not change the formula. Don't make a fake. Don't, don't do something simply because you know it will draw a crowd. Verse 34. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take unto thee sweet spices. Brand new formula, brand new thing. Take unto thee sweet spices, stack, Oincha and galvanum, these sweet spices with pure frankincense of each shall you be a light weight, so all even, all mixed together. And thou shalt make it a perfume, a confection after the art of the apothecary, tempered together pure and holy, and thou shalt beat some of it very small. Now, you know, one thing that we don't like to think about is being beat down small. Now, but if, if we're going to be useful to the things of God, we got to beat things down real small. we got to be willing to do whatever. We're, we got to be willing to endure whatever. And, and see, what you do when you endure a sickness, uh, illness, or when you endure hard times financially, when you come out on the other side, it is a testimony to others. But Now, this is how it will work, though. If you don't stick with God, if you don't, if you give up and say, well, forget about it because God's not really in it anyway, you will do the opposite. You will take from the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will diminish who he is. And so he says here, uh, give it to the apothecary and let, it, and let him beat it down real, real good into just the smallest thing you can think of. And thou shalt beat some of it very small and put it before the testimony in the congregation, in the tabernacle of the congregation. There... I will meet with thee. Now that's a promise is that God's going to meet with us. After all this preparation, this beating down, this hand mixture, this specific recipe, when that's all in place, I believe he'll still meet with us, don't you? I believe it will still come down. He has a promise to us that two or three are gathered together there in my name. There shall I be in the midst. And if we do this hard work on the front end, I believe God will meet with us. And when we don't, when we fail to, when we're distracting, listen, He's not going to. And so that formula must be followed very carefully and then He will meet with us. It shall be unto thee most holy. Now, is coming here most holy to you? Is coming here, um, is your purpose for coming here is to meet with the Lord? It is your purpose for coming here to worship? Because really all, all our preparation really depends on this. Why are we coming to start with? Verse 37. And as for the perfume... Thou shalt take it, and as for the, excuse me, the middle of uh, verse 36 is the promise that he's going to meet with us. Now go with me to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. And we see a very familiar, uh, a very similar promise in the New Testament to New Testament believers concerning the church. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 19. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 19. 
For, I, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Now, I personally mean that is uh, that is to the arrogant. Some people say that's to the Jew. Uh, I don't necessarily believe it's exclusively to the Jew because I met some pretty arrogant Baptists that think they have arrived, that think they know more than everybody else, that they think that they can fit every scripture into every little thing, and they're just as arrogant as a self-righteous Jew. They're just as arrogant uh, as a Jew in, in the in the lineage of David, and so he he says that is coming. Where is the wine? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Have not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For after this is the wisdom of God. The word of wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Now, I want you to see that the new anointing is this. It's to save through simple preaching. You don't have to be eloquent. You don't have to like you act like you know everything. Just like a simple Linwood oil. Preach. Just preach the truth. Just put it out there. It, it, it's wonderful to think about how the tabernacle used, must have looked. But isn't it a wonderful thing that we don't have to have a tabernacle? Isn't it a wonderful thing that we don't have to come up and, and set up a tent? Um, most of y'all probably know this, but Amish people meet house to house. And they have two big old wagons, or maybe it's just one, that has their pews on it. And you can tell who's going to have church because the pew wagon will be at their house. And those pews come out. Well, first of all, the women of the house pull everything back, push everything to the side. If you've been into many Amish houses, a lot, a lot of them will have a wall that folds out. And they fold everything back. They clean everything up. They come in and they unfold those pews. And they get everything set up. And next week it's all to be done again. Isn't it a wonderful thing that we don't have to do that? That if we do inward preparation, that's all we need. If you have prayed, if you have studied, if you have looked, to look and, and taken me before the Lord, that's all there is. No inward oil, no, no, no crushing of anything. Just prepared prayerfully by the Lord. And you will receive something. I believe it's the Lord's people today. If there ever was a time, if you're real desirous of worship, and I don't know that we always are, do you? I don't know that we're always in a mode of worship. I don't know that we always um, are even in a condition where we want to hear from the Lord. We say we do. But see, what the Lord has for us is not always just uh, bells and whistles, is it? Sometimes it's, Larry, you did this wrong. Larry, you need to do more. You're not giving enough time to your ministry. Sometimes it's very difficult and the preparation is hard, but oh, isn't it worth it? When, when He comes down and He meets with us and we can worship uh, together with Him, isn't it a wonderful, wonderful time? It's worth the effort, whatever it takes.